wanted to show you my tripod. It's just books. Mm, probably not the most stable of places to put my camera. Well, I might get up what I've been doing um, yesterday on placement. Um, two seconds because I want to tell you properly what I've done. Okay, so my day yesterday um, was really interesting. Um, my PE was away on holiday, so um, I was with another SLT called Catherine, who um, she was lovely. She took me round the wards and basically showed me what she would be doing during the day. So the first thing that we did is we went up onto HCU again, so the ward where people have just had surgery. And we actually managed to fit in three patients, which was really great. So the first man we saw had had a glossectomy, so as I talked about in my previous video, where he'd had I think this one was a full glossectomy. This means that all of his tongue, up to like the back of his tongue, had been removed. So what had happened there is obviously his, he'd had his cancer on his tongue and they decided that the whole tongue had been affected um, to the back of his tongue. So they just remove all of it. So all of the cancerous tissue they need to get rid of because otherwise the cancer can spread. So with that, um, they can't, well, they prefer not to just leave it as nothing there. They take a little bit of skin from your thigh um, and what they do is they make a flap out of that tissue, which I think is amazing because without that he wouldn't have a tongue. So that bit of skin from his thigh has helped him to have a tongue again which I think is so cool. Um, but obviously he had lots of difficulties, so without a proper working, moving tongue, um, trouble speaking and trouble swallowing because as soon as the food goes into your mouth, you're chewing it up, you're using your tongue to move it around your mouth and then you're swallowing it, sending it back to be swallowed. So without your tongue, it's actually really hard to swallow. So what we were doing is going in and checking how his swallowing was doing. So when we were there, he was nil by mouth, which means he wasn't having anything to eat or drink because of the surgery. So we had to establish whether he was safe to be eating and drinking. So we, um, I think he was having sips of fluid before we were there. So we were trying him um, on sips of normal water um, so what he does because obviously he can't send the water back with his tongue now because that what he has as a tongue isn't really movable it's just kind of there for aesthetics and for something for the um, food to like go back on um, so he uses a head tilt so to get the water down he'll um, sip the water, tilt his head back and use gravity to get it down his throat. So that was really interesting to see that kind of manoeuvre and how he was coping with not having his tongue anymore basically. Um, we advised him to use a straw so um, the sucking motion will help strengthen what, what muscle he has left underneath his tongue um, and should send because the straw goes further into your mouth, it should help him with his swallow a little bit more. So sending that fluid back further before he has to initiate that swallow. Second lady we saw was, she'd had a partial glossectomy. So um, part of her tongue had been removed. She said she was worried about how her speech was sounding. So similar to the lady that um, we saw last week, basically, and we advised the same things. Um, the exercises um, and making sure that um, we keep going back and seeing how she's doing with her speech. What else did you do? Okay, so the previous week I forgot to mention we saw a man who um, was going in for surgery the following week, so this week. 
He was about 40. He needed a laryngectomy because his cancer was in his voice box. Um, and we were doing a pre-treatment treatment with him, which means we um, basically tell him about the laryngectomy, what it means, um, and what will happen to him afterwards. So all of the care he'll be given by us, um, and basically what to expect from it all um, as, from a speech therapy point of view. Um, and it was really nice, we got to see him this week, and he'd had the surgery, um, walking around the ward, like, I think he'd had the surgery that a uh, day earlier, and he was up and about, like literally he was like um, telling us how he wanted to go home. Um, and obviously he couldn't speak, because he hadn't had, had his valve fitted yet, so the valves I was talking about last week, he would have that fitted next week. Um, so at the moment he was just kind of miming, um, using his lips to um, articulate words, so we were kind of lip reading him, um, and uh, he was using a pen and paper to write things down if it was too tricky to do just from miming. Um, but it was really nice to see him and he wanted to go home and he was he seemed okay in himself, so that was a really nice one to go and um, just check up on him and see how he was doing and kind of following through before treatment, during and then hopefully after. So maybe I'll see him again next week for his valve, play, um, valve change. In the afternoon we did a pre-treatment which means um, somebody comes in and um, we, like I said with um, the previous guy, we told her what to expect from um, this time it was radiotherapy she was having. So with radiotherapy it's um, basically like having really bad sunburn on the area that gets the therapy. So it's like a laser and it um, attacks the cells that are cancerous. But um, the lasers at the moment, they can pinpoint the cancer to a certain extent, but they usually do get some bits around the cancer too. So if they're pinpointing here, it will probably be that much um, that gets affected. So that means speech and swallow is obviously going to be hard. And if you imagine sunburn but 10 times worse in your mouth or your throat, you're obviously not going to be wanting to eat or drink anything acidic. Um, it's obviously going to be really painful. And these people have radiotherapy for, um, I think it's like 10 weeks. I'm going to have to check that one. I think it depends on the person. But um, we kind of tell them how to deal with the pain and um, what to eat and drink during their time having radiotherapy and also the time after. So that was interesting to see how my P dealt with. Um, that is kind of a quite a hard thing to tell somebody that they're not going to be able to eat and drink what they want, that their taste might go. Um, it's really likely that you won't be able to taste the way that you normally do, so your taste buds will definitely change um, if it's around your mouth area that's getting treated. Um, yeah, there's lots of side effects to radiation, so fatigue and um, mucositis which is um, the inflammation of your mucous membrane so the, um, when you produce saliva it will be thicker so dealing with that when you're swallowing just lots of different things that I didn't really realise gets affected during radiotherapy so we were telling this lady about all of that and then we saw a guy who had just had his first radiotherapy um, appointment so um, he'd gone in, um, had his radiotherapy, and then we went to see him to let him know that um, basically radiotherapy stiffens um, muscles. So radiotherapy kind of limits your blood supply to that area, which makes the muscles stiffer over time. Um, so we have to make sure that the muscles in the mouth and the neck are kept stimulated because if they aren't they can just fibrose and become stiff and if somebody has that then it can't be changed back you have a stiff tongue and you have stiff muscles here for the rest of your life basically so um, we give people exercises to do through radiotherapy and then for the foreseeable future after because if you don't keep working those muscles, they're going to stiffen up 
and it means that you won't be able to speak or swallow anymore um, if it becomes really bad. So it's really important that people do these exercises because um, for their quality of life, really. It was a really good day at placement actually because I feel like I learnt a lot about um, like all of the radiotherapy side of stuff and um, treating people after their radiotherapy as well as during. So yeah, it was a really good day. I hope you enjoyed listening about it. Um, I could talk about it for ages. Like I find it so interesting and I'm learning so much each day. Um, so if you want to continue hearing, I guess subscribe and give it a like if you liked it. Um, but yeah, I guess I will do another video when I've had another day at placement, which is next week. So yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.